means that the number one pick in the 2021 NBA draft goes to the Detroit Pistons. Who's got the number one pick in this year's draft? Who's got the number one pick in this year's draft? Basketball! Select Isaiah Stewart. The Detroit Pistons select Killian Hayes. Sadiq, that was absolutely sensational. I don't know what went into that process. I met the criteria to be selected, but I wasn't. From long range. Hey, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of the Palace of Pistons podcast, brought to you by Believe, Aaron Johnson, and Jasper Apollonia here with you for this week's show. Jasper, you weren't here for last week's show, it was me and Mike. Now, Mike's not here this week. We're back in one of those little funks. We ended 2022 on a high note, all three of us, quote unquote, in the studio together. Uh, this week, it's just you and me ready to put together a good show. I know we've got a ton to talk about. How are you doing, my friend? I'm good. Uh, it's Thank God we have this little musical chairs thing going on, because otherwise we would never get this podcast out. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the blessing of having three hosts. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice thing to have. But I'm doing all right. Uh, really fun win for the Pistons last night. Kind of a weird one, especially after a terrible loss to Philly. Uh, but I'm doing well we we actually have a lot to talk about on this week's edition so i'm i'm ready to get into it whenever you are man yeah I, we've got a ton so i do want to get into it before we do that we have to talk about bet online as we do every week on the show basketball is back and bet online remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season you'll always find the latest odds team matchup info players news and game trends at bet online and as your continued source for all sports wagering information Bet online features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. It's always the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports and events, whether that's the NFL, NBA, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, or even golf. Head to betonline.ag and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use our promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. Use code BLEAV to receive 50% on your first deposit. You'll get a bonus of 50%. It's a great promotion. Bet online. We thank them for their support each and every week. And if you were betting on the Pistons uh, yesterday, for whatever reason, you probably were a happy, happy camper. The Pistons were minus six against the, or excuse me, the Pistons were plus six against the Timberwolves. I was on the opposite side of that. I was on the Timberwolves minus six. The Pistons not only covered, but they won after what's been a weird week of basketball for the Pistons. I think really you go back to the Golden State win, which I think is where this all started because it was their first win like in a little bit. It was a pretty odd win. No one really expected them to beat Golden State. They kind of hung in for for the first half, even in the third quarter. And then they just kind of pull away in the fourth, which, you know, Golden State being such a good team in the second half was really odd. Then they dropped the game by double digits to San Antonio in their next matchup. So it was like, okay, Pistons are kind of back to their old ways. They then lost by a combined just around 50 points to, to Philadelphia and back-to-back matchups. Unfortunately, I myself was at uh, the first game that was at home on Sunday. Just an absolutely awful performance, which I guess that's partly on me. I think I've been at the two worst home games of the year for Detroit. That Philadelphia <laughs> the Cavs one, right? And then the Cleveland one earlier in the year. Yeah. When all of us Palace of Pistons guys, besides Jasper, unfortunately, were there. And then they go out and beat the Timberwolves uh, in a matchup where the Pistons were without a ton of players. And Anthony Edwards, who was questionable to play, ended up playing – it's just been a weird week of basketball for Detroit. And I, I, I'm i not sure the win, like the win against Minnesota was all that good considering they came out really, really flat. And then, I don't know, Minnesota just kind of was like, I don't think we really want to be here tonight. And I don't know. It's just been a very odd week for Detroit. No, that was a bizarre game. I mean, Pistons came out of the gate down 10 to nothing to the Timberwolves. Turn it around, win by 17. I mean, that wasn't even the weirdest part of the game. The, the weirdest part was when they said Anthony Edwards is out for the rest of the game because of his hip. And then halfway through the third quarter, he 
comes back into the game in a matchup that the Timberwolves just were not in. It didn't make any sense to me why he was playing whatsoever. Like they, they just were not going to win that game. They, they stink. I, I hate that team. I really have to be honest. Um, I should have tweeted it out last night because I was thinking about it when they went down 10 to nothing. I said, Oh boy, this is going to be a big Hamadou Diallo game. And <laughs> it ended up being a really big Hamadou Diallo game. I should have said something. I should have called my shot too bad. Um, but yeah, especially following that up with a with a terrible, terrible back-to-back losses against Philly, that close win against Golden State where they eked out, you know, that last-second shot, Sadiq Bay with the game winner, which was super fun. The Pistons are four and five in their last nine, Aaron. I can't say, though, that they've looked particularly good at any stretch of it. They just happen to be winning a few games right now. You'll take it considering how bad they've been for most of the season. But yeah, definitely a weird stretch for Detroit. Kind of weird that they're like four and nine, you know, four and five in their last nine. Yet I feel like the fan base is closer to giving up on the season than they have at any other point so far. Yeah, it's been a really weird couple of weeks going into the new year for Detroit. And yeah, I mean, it just seems like the way they're playing right now is they're either losing by double digits or they've got to score 130 points to win on any given night. I mean, I think the Golden State game, really the only close game that they've played recently, and they still gave up 119 points. You know, they're just not playing a good brand of basketball right now. And I think when you mix that combined with the fact that every other night one of the key young guys is hurt, which for a rebuilding team is probably the biggest reason reason to watch them play is you want to watch these young pieces that, you know, in our minds will be part of that next playoff group uh, of the Detroit Pistons. But you're obviously missing Kate Cunningham for the rest of the year, which is the biggest bummer possible this season. And then you're at a point now where over these, you know, last handful of games, Jalen Duren's been out. Isaiah Stewart's missed a couple of games. Uh, you know, Killian Hayes was coming off that that three game uh, suspension. I know he's been back for the last four or five or so, but he was out there for a little bit. And considering he's been one of the better players as of late for the Pistons, that's disappointing. Bogdanovich missed a game, so you're watching. You know, some combination of Hamadou Diallo. You know, now we're seeing Nerlens Noel uh Alec Burks like you're not seeing the guys that you're probably tuning into the game to watch like yes you're watching the Pistons as a whole but you're obviously going to want to watch the good players or the better than the worst players on the roster play and we're just not seeing that you know different guys are out you're getting a lot of Hamadou Diallo, you're getting some Kevin Knox. Like, you're just getting these guys that, you know, they're not the reason you tune in, right? And when you mix that in with how bad the Pistons have been, really particularly on the defensive end of the floor, I think they've made some strides offensively, but they're just so lost on the defensive side of the floor that you never know if they're going to be able to compete or stay in a game on a nightly basis because they are just so prone to giving up 130, 140 points at this point that – you know, that's just not a brand of basketball you want to you want to watch. It's just kind of demoralizing. I mean, I'll say it from being at the game on, on, on this past Sunday. It's like Philadelphia, you knew from the tip, was going to win that game big. I mean, I, I couldn't believe the line going into the game was, I think it was five and a half, maybe no. six. Oh, because well, they didn't have Embiid for that first yeah. game. Yeah, but even, even without Embiid, I mean, they just toyed with Detroit. It was, you know... It was an embarrassing game, and that's just kind of how Detroit's been. But then they mix in these weird wins. Like, they go out in Golden State to a team that's 17-2 and at home all year and win on a a buzzer beater. They get a a, a game against uh, Minnesota where they they should lose. No Duran, no Stewart, um, but you get 31 points from Sadiq Bey. And and Jaden Ivey plays well, and Killian Hayes plays well. So, they're just, you know, they're very inconsistent on offense, uh, you know, in terms of staying with the team. But that also is predicated on they're just putrid defensively. And that's been their biggest hindrance all year outside of just not having the bodies to to, to play on a nightly basis. 
Yeah, and I think this is a perfect time to get into our our stock report for the week because I want to talk about a guy that is kind of indicative of that whole thing where he is a definitely a driving force behind the offense. And while his stock over the last five games is up, it's in the way that like crypto stocks go up where it's like, okay, we're up big and now we're down huge and now we're up big again and now we're down big again and now we're up big again uh, to where like it's a net gain, but boy, it's been a roller coaster the whole time. I, I want to talk about Killian Hayes. Um, because he has, in this stretch overall, his numbers are, are very solid. We're talking uh, since he came back from suspension against Golden State. We're talking splits of 15 points, 8 assists, 2.5 rebounds, 2.5 steals, and a little under 3 turnovers per game on really solid 45, uh, 35, 83 splits. So he's been very good overall. We're talking a a 54% true shooting percentage. You love to see that. The steals have been up. That's something that we've been, you know, a little wary of for the last last few weeks. We've definitely been noticing his steals being down in the season. But a lot of those overall numbers come from really up and down performances. For example, it comes back against Golden State. 13 assists, zero turnovers, but only nine points on three of 12 shooting. He then goes out two games later, puts up 26 points against Philly on 11 of 17 shooting. I, I believe that's a career high for him. Um, but, you know, he's also then the next game going out there and giving you two of 11 shooting for five points against the same Philadelphia team. Turns it around last night, 18 and nine against the, the Timberwolves. So while overall the numbers look really good and he's absolutely been the driving force behind the Pistons offense, I mean, that's why they're getting a few wins in here. Um, it's super, super inconsistent. So while I'd like to say Killian Hayes, yes, stock up. He has been a lot better since he came back. Overall, the numbers look really good, especially on the defensive end, especially in terms of distributing the ball. But it's been really inconsistent. And I think that is kind of like a, a good place to see where the Pistons are right now is kind of with Killian Hayes. They're just so up and down. You don't know what you're going to necessarily get from game to game. You're just hoping that you're seeing, you know, some level of improvement throughout the season. Yeah, I think Hayes is one of those guys where, you know, even even if Detroit's struggling, you know, he still needs to have his big games. And he's definitely gotten better as of late. Like the, the consistency, as you mentioned, still a little bit of a struggle. The, the six or two Sixers games back to back are – a great notice of that, but you know, he's, he's had some, some great performances as of late and it's, in, it's really, really important. And it's, it's a discussion we're going to have later that Hayes is in, involved with, but he's trying to prove his value to the franchise long-term and continuing to get better as the season goes on. You know, the, he's has such a big opportunity. Uh, I think that's, that's a, a guy that might be have the most important remainder of the season left for anyone on this team. My guy, uh, for stock up is actually Nerlens Noel. About a, how about a guy that has barely played this year before the start, start of twenty twenty three? He had only appeared in eight or so games for Detroit under you know under ten games, and a few of those games were just garbage time. Get in there for two, three, four minutes, but he's played the last three games for the Pistons, and he's made some noticeable difference on the court. I mean, the the win against Minnesota. He had seven stocks, so four four blocks, three steals. He also had five rebounds, two assists, two points that game. He had, in the second game of the back-to-back -back against Philadelphia, had five points, five rebounds, three blocks, and a steal. And in the first game against Philadelphia, uh, he had six points. He had a couple mid-range jumpers that I, I just didn't really know were part of his game. Uh, Nerlens Noel, a guy that's not expected to be on the Pistons uh, much longer. They're expecting that he's moved by the deadline. But he's showing like why there might be some value to what he can bring to a team, which it's good for himself because I'm sure he wants to be, you know, with a team where he can get some minutes, try to contribute to uh, an organization that's playoff bound or trying to get to the playoffs. And it's good for the Pistons because it might earn them a little bit more uh, in the deal now that teams are seeing that, okay, this guy can help us. This guy does do things that are going to provide value. Uh, to our team. And I think that that was something that 
skepticism was maybe growing a bit because he wasn't getting in for Detroit. And so nobody was able to see what he had, how he had looked recently. Now we get that look. So I'll get my stock up to Nerlens Noel for, you know, showing he can still play and, and maybe providing some extra value in the trade market for Detroit. Yeah, Aaron. I mean, we were talking about him at the beginning of the season as potentially playing over Durin to, to start things off. People seem to have forgotten that Nerlens Noel is a very good rim protector. Like he's a good defender and he has been for a while now. Uh, that hasn't gone away. He's still in his athletic prime. He, like we saw it last night, I thought he did a better job of rim protecting than Rudy Gobert did last night. I, I thought he outplayed Gobert just kind of period. Uh, perhaps not on the offensive side, but it's not like Gobert was lighting up the score sheet. Uh, so I, I think for me, that's a that's a great pick. He absolutely has proven that he still has value, especially as a bench big. I mean, if you're a team like the Mavericks and you see a game like last night or against Philly, how are you not just like going to do everything you can to trade for a guy like Nerland Lynch Noel who can protect the rim for you? You, you need some like that so i think that's a great pick he's showing that he can be really effective and useful without scoring the ball and that's a huge part of it especially for a team that's going to be trading for him like you think of somebody like marvin bagley he has way less trade value because he needs the ball in his hands to be effective if you're somebody like the mavericks that's perfect you don't want the ball in new orleans Noel's hands you want it in everybody else's hands so yeah absolutely aaron i totally agree with that Nerlens Noel has played really, really well over the last few games. And uh, as long as Duran and Stewart are out, I anticipate him providing really solid defensive upside um, game in and game out. I, I don't think that's something that is a fluke by any means. Yeah, I think you can make a good point. I also think, and I, I don't want to take your your stock down guy, but I think it's a little worrisome that Nerlens Noel is seemingly more impactful than Marvin Bagley. No, I, you know what? That's a perfect opportunity. I will look at it and do it. Yeah, that's my stock down guy. And maybe that seems a little bit unfair considering that he hasn't played since the Portland game where he got hurt. And, you know, there's now rumblings that his hand injury might take him out, not just for like six to eight weeks, but for the rest of the season potentially, which would be a huge blow to, to Marvin Bagley. But I, honestly, I just don't think he's played well when he has played. And I think over the last five games in particular, you don't you don't feel his absence. And that was something that I think at the beginning of the season you definitely did feel was, man, this bench unit can't score. We really need Mar Marvin Bagley. But now you're looking at the Pistons and they're getting scoring contributions from all across the board, both on the, 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 the bench and from the starters. Guys like Hamadou Diallo, guys like Kevin Knox, they've really stepped up big. Alec Burks has just been huge for this team the whole season. I, I really feel like he is the most underappreciated and under talked about player on this roster. Like, do people not remember how horrible the bench was before Alec Burks came back? Do you not remember that for like 20 minutes a game, every game, you kind of just wanted to turn off the TV and like he stopped that. So for me though, I, I thought Marvin Bagley was a big part of that, but I just haven't felt his absence whatsoever. Uh, you don't feel it really offensively because you have guys like Hamadou Diallo who are able to give you that kind of like chaotic scoring ability. You certainly don't feel it on the defensive side of things because the Pistons defense has been bad with him off the floor and even worse with him on it. So for me, I think Marvin Bagley has, has to be my stock down guy only because I'm now looking at the team and I'm saying like, do I, do they need him back? Do I want him back? I don't really think so. I, I don't think that they're a better or I don't think they're really a much better team with him on the floor. And I frankly think they're not much worse without him on the floor. In fact, they might be a little bit better. So for right now, I think Marvin Bagley has to be my stock down guy simply because his absence is just not felt. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that's unfair. I mean, I think last week Marvin Bagley was my stock down guy, if I recall, mm -hmm. or, or or the week before that. Not too far off because he hey. just can't stay on the court, and he hasn't been effective when he's on the court, at least not defensively. Might get you eight points on offense, but he's going to give up 14 on defense. Can I pose a question to you, Aaron? That 31-point loss to the Philadelphia 76ers, which basically came because 
the Pistons had nobody to guard Joel Embiid. I mean, they're throwing like Kevin Knox and Hamidou Diallo on him. I'm not even joking. Do you think that would have been any, that margin of vic- of loss would have been any better if Marvin Bagley was out there? Do you think he would have provided a modicum more of defense towards Joel Embiid than the Pistons were able to? No, no, I like not at yeah. all. Like it wouldn't yeah. have surprised me if the score was worse. Like Bagley is such a horrendous defender and has not improved at all, at all. Like he is just a nothing. He is a negative, a very negative on defense. And, and that's that's the, the biggest reason why he's not missed because mm-hmm. like I just said, he'll get you eight points, but he's going to do it where – he hijacks the possession. He decides, all right, I'm catching it, you know, baseline, high baseline. I'm going to ISO my guy and try to go score. And then he's going to get burned defensively. He's going to give up 14 points. So, yeah, I, not at all. My stock down guy, uh, it's kind of unfair, but it's Jaden Ivy. He's just so inconsistent. You don't know what you're going to get from him on a nightly basis. The defense has been absolutely horrendous so when you mix that with his inefficiency on offense you you know there's nights where the minnesota game it, it, that's his best game in a while seven of 11 mm-hmm. shooting 18 points eight assists four rebounds three steals like was more involved on both sides of the court uh than he has been as of late but there's just too many too many moments where you can look and say he is just you know not playing defense he is just ball watching and that's – it's just not acceptable. Like, this team is a disaster defensively, and the hope is that, you know, you get guys that try to be part of the solution, and Ivy's contributing to the the, the, the Pistons' defensive woes in a negative way. He's making them worse. It's why the why, – why the guards, opposing team guards, continue to go off against Detroit every single night because that guard rotation doesn't play defense, and – there's not enough defense surrounding them. There's not enough protection in the paint to assist with them being lackadaisical on that side of the court. Um, it's a little unfair because he did just have a really nice game against Minnesota, and we try to attribute the stock report to, like, the last week of games. But I, I've just seen so many moments, you know, over the last couple of weeks where Ivy is just nowhere to be found defensively. So I'm going to point that out. But a good a good game against Minnesota. Hopefully this is the start of some sort of consistent turnaround for him because he's getting more involved as a playmaker. I like that. He's got to continue to get more efficient as a scorer. You know, so far in January, the shooting has been a little bit better, um, but we'll see if that can hold. This actually does take us, though, into probably our most interesting topic of the show, I'd say. There has been a lot of talk recently about Killian Hayes, about Jaden and Ivey, and about their roles on the roster long term. James Edwards of the third of the Athletic actually wrote about this a little bit in a recent piece. There's, you know, some talk about okay, let's say that Pistons end up with the number two pick. The expectation is that they would take Scoot Henderson. If Victor Wembanyama goes number one as expected, that leaves Scoot, the number two guy in the draft. And if the Pistons have Kate Cunningham, Scoot Henderson, what happens to someone like Jaden Ivey? What happens to someone like Killian Hayes? If the Pistons had to choose between one of those guys, you know, you talk, you ask that question in October, and you don't even ask the question because you know it's Jaden Ivey. And now here we are in January, and people are looking at the way Killian Hayes has performed as of late, seeing a little bit of some inconsistency with Ivey. And now there are people that are actually saying, no, I think if the Pistons had to choose, they should keep Killian Hayes. If they had to make a decision like that. I just think this is an interesting philo- like f- philosophy question in terms of how you build out this roster. You know, how much do you take into account the play of the last, you know, month and a half, two months for these two players and how that balances with your belief in their potential long-term for their career. I mean, Jasper, if you had to pick, you know, in that scenario, Pistons have Kate Cunningham. Pistons have Scoot Henderson. You have to build uh, around those two guys, and you have to make a decision on Killian Hayes or Jaden Ivey. Where are you leaning right now? Well, I think you're totally right when you say it is a philosophical question because for me, philosophically, I think it's absolutely crazy that we're having this conversation. I just think it's absolutely nuts. Um, 
look, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if the guy, if Scoot Henderson, if you have the second pick and Scoot Henderson's there, you take Scoot Henderson. He is one of the best point guard, point guard prospects we've ever had, frankly. Uh, you talk about his size, his speed, his skill, his ability. Dude, it's a total package when it comes to the point guard play. Um, I I think a big reason why we're even having this conversation is because people have not seen good point guard play in Detroit for so long. I love what Killian Hayes has done, but like Killian Hayes is not playing to prove he should be a starter next year. He's, he's not, he's not going to be, nor should he be. He's not a high level enough of a point guard to be a starter. He is a backup for this team. And the idea that like you'd pick between him and Jade and Ivy too, is just absurd to me. Have, have you learned nothing from watching Killian Hayes? Rookie guards struggle young raw guards struggle in this league it happens every year and when you look at even Jaden Ivey's numbers compared to similar guys like De'Aaron Fox and Russell Westbrook at his age their rookie seasons guess what he compares pretty favorably to those dudes so I think the fact that we're even having this conversation is insane I don't care who they take next year the backup point guard is Killian Hayes uh Jaden Ivey is going to start for you next year that is going to happen I'll put where's bet online to get me some props for this. Cause I want to put all my life savings on it. Uh, to me, the only discussion here is whether if you do take scoot, whether you decide to switch K down to the three spot, I think that is really the only discussion. Um, the idea that you're going to trade Jaden Ivy after his rookie year is it's beyond absurd to me. I, it's like making me mad. I think it's, it's, it's stupid. And I want to use an adjective before that. I, I use the word stupid. Um, yeah, it's insane. And the idea that you're going to take Scoot Henderson and trade Jaden Ivey and I don't know, like bring kill. I, I just, it's so stupid to me. I can't even keep talking about it, Aaron. I'm interested to hear what you have to say on this. Maybe you feel differently. Um, but if you take Scoot Henderson, then your first thing you do is you run out there with three guards next year and you give it 40 games to see not even even you give it 35 games to see if it works and if it doesn't then you start talking about what you do in the future but until then i, I just think the answer is so blindingly obvious that it makes any discussion pointless in my eyes yeah no i'm i'm in complete agreement i, I it just shows you how how much recency bias plays into these types of questions because you know let's not forget Killian Hayes for the first two months was a, a, terrible, abysmal, abysmal. Not even, not even a rotation player, and he's been so much better now. Absolutely, but like you said, he's still not a starting level point guard in today's league. And I, I think Jade and Ivy. I mean, we spent all off season. We spent. You know, summer league talking about this guy's gonna be the real deal. You look at all of the attributes that he has. He has that all-star level potential, that all-star level makeup of a player. He has the athleticism, he has the speed, he can get to the rim, he can distribute for others. And like, yeah, this 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 being a discussion point right now over you know a rookie who's been I, I guess you can say average this year compared to a third year player who's just now starting to play like a little bit above average. It's insane to me. It's it's I don't understand how this became a discussion. I don't understand why it's a discussion. You would absolutely run out Scoot, Ivy, and Kate Cunningham. And then if it didn't work from there, you know, maybe Ivy is a guy you bring off the bench. I still think he has more potential than that. You know, you look at some of those performances that that Ivy has had this year. We talk about it takes time for a rookie guard. It takes time for them to get to play at the pace of the NBA. When it gets fast, when it slows down, how to, you know, kind of level your game in all those types of situations, figuring out how to play against bigger guards, more skilled, faster bigs. Like the the bigs in the NBA are so much better than the bigs at the college level. I mean, you know, you go back to college and it's like, you know, some of the best bigs in college basketball in, in recent history, like Luca Garza. I mean, Luca Garza is a, <laughs> a two-way contract in the NBA. You're playing against so much better competition. And 
it's just insane. I mean, Ivy has had some phenomenal performances this year. Yes, he's had his struggles, but his best performances are so much better than than you know anything you can look at from Killian Hayes's first or second year in the league. That again, why this has been a, a a question brought up, you know, I don't really understand. I get there's not like a ton to really talk about with this team. It's really unfortunate that in January of the season, these discussions about, oh, like, what's this team look like if we get the second pick and we take Scoot? Like, it's it's unfortunate that that's where we're at at this point in the season. I guess we're there, though, considering how bad the Pistons have been. But to me, this is a no-brainer because we're just we're just reacting – with such recency bias, and it, it, again, it's it's not even like Killian Hayes has been, you know, this this all star level guy or anything. Whereas no, Ivy's been okay at times. Now, he's had his 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 bad games, but he's also had some really strong performances. So, yeah, this is a crazy discussion for me, but it's something that I wanted to bring up because obviously enough people are talking about it, and I feel like we had to give our takes on it. I mean, like Aaron, even the idea that like that people are throwing out that Killian Hayes is going to be the star starter on this team next year. I, I it's so absurd. Look, I'm just going to run through some pl- point guards with you right now. Let's not even for this year. Let's say for next year, let's say Killian Hayes next year is able to put up what he's put up over these last six games. We're talking 15 points, eight assists, two and a half rebounds. Let's just say that is the baseline for him. That's really nice. Okay. Is he better than Luka Doncic? Right. Give me give me a yes or no. No, just give me a yes or no on these guys. I'm just going to throw out a few for you. Okay. Luka Doncic, yes or no? Is he better no. than him? No. no. SGA. Mm-mm. Steph. Obviously not. Ja. Tyrese. Nope. Damian Lillard. Nope. Trey Young. Kyrie Irving. De'Aaron Fox. Jalen Brunson. Le- LaMelo Ball. Drew Holiday. Darius Garland. Chris Paul. Jamal Murray. Uh, l- let's go Malcolm Brogdon. L- like Tyrese Maxey. Uh, is he better than any of those guys? Nope. No, he's not. Is he going to be better than them next year? No. Nope. So if we're talking about it right there, we're talking about the what? Even if that is where he is, he's at best like the 20th best point guard in the NBA. You can't have that if you want to win like playoff games. He's never going to be more than that. So the idea that we're even talking about him being the starter for this team long term and trading away Jaden Ivey if you're bringing on Scoot Henderson – What are we talking about here, people? Like, what are we talking about? You need to watch some teams other than this one because clearly watching terrible point guard play for the last almost decade plus other than a a year and a half of Reggie Jackson has melted your minds. There is no discussion here. You take Scoot Henderson, you're not trading Jaden Ivey. End of story. End of discussion. The only discussion is whether you switch Kate Cunningham down to the three. And that's a discussion I'm willing to have. But other than that, it's a non-starter. You either take Scoot Henderson and move Kate to the three, or you take somebody else. But you're not trading Jaden and Ivy. Passionate. Passionate. I I love it. Ridiculous. Yeah, I I was really shocked by this this being a big enough conversation to make it into – you know, James Peace, and I've seen it like people on Twitter being like, you know, I'll say it. I I would take Killian. Like I'd build her, I I'd keep Killian. I'd trade oh Ivy. And it's like God. it's just crazy to me because I I yeah, no, I am not gonna continue to repeat myself. I mean, we we've both said it, like there's just not there's just not a world where that logistically makes sense for this team. I mean trading Jaden Ivy so you can start Killian Hayes in a three guard lineup. Get or just get keep real Killian Hayes in general. Even oh, if you just kept him and brought him off the bench, like still, it's it's. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, oh my god, yeah, I, it's just, I, it's silly to me. It's really silly to me. So uh, I don't know. I mean, what are you getting back for Jaden Ivy in year two? That's gonna possibly be worth what he could be in year. F- it doesn't. All right, yep. whatever. I'm not gonna keep going. <laughs> I'm not gonna keep going. Though. Okay, let's let's wrap up with one more thing. Isaiah Livers, who hasn't played since December first. Uh, made his return to the floor against the Timberwolves. Not a a big game for him or anything, but this is a guy that has had a fair share of injuries in his NBA career, missed a lot of time last year, has missed a handful, not not a handful, a lot more than a handful of games this year, and he had some injury issues at Michigan before getting to the NBA as well. You know, it's one of those guys that 
I know you at the beginning of the year were championing at championing. I can't say that word. Uh, talking about it potentially <laughs> being, you know, a big guy in the rotation, even big enough to be in the starting lineup. Like, it's really disappointing that he's just another guy that's been absolutely destroyed by the injury bug. Like, it's big to get him back. He's got to stay healthy. And there's a pretty big opportunity for him right now with all these these guys out for Detroit, isn't there? Oh, without a question. Aaron, I mean... We're talking about a team that has been so bad defensively, especially on the wings. This is really Isaiah Livers' opportunity to show that he can be a part of this team long-term. They need him to provide 3 and D spacing. That's that's it. That's really it. And I think that if he can just do that at a good level, you're going to see it happen to the Pistons' defense. I think you're going to see a, an improvement there. I think you're going to be able to see them you know, keep up with teams offensively. They've been doing a good job of that, but like just continuously doing that while providing a modicum more of defense than guys like Hamadou Diallo or Kevin Knox can give you. Although I will say I have liked Kevin Knox's defensive contributions this year based on what I was expecting from him based on his play in previous stops. Um, Yeah, this is a tremendous, tremendous opportunity for Isaiah Livers because there's really no reason to not keep playing him unless he plays poorly. So it really comes down to that. If he can play well, um, he's got a fantastic opportunity to show he can be a big part of this team moving forward. I, I know he didn't do a lot last night. Um, you know, he he only played 18 minutes, hit a three, had a few rebounds, didn't do a whole ton, but I definitely look forward to seeing a little bit more from him in, in the coming weeks. He's still a guy I have, you know, maybe not high expectations for, but high hopes for. Yeah, I mean, Liver's 24 years old. Um, the guys that he has an opportunity to get opportunity to get minutes over, you know, the Diallo, the Knox, uh, guys of 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 the world, you know, all that opportunity should be given to him. He's a guy that long term, you know, I think projects to be a guy that can contribute. But the biggest caveat there is if he can stay healthy. He hasn't been able to uh so far in the league, but if, if he can. You know, it, it, it would be nice to have a guy like that that can defend off the bench, can space the floor off the bench, isn't afraid to to go in there and rebound. Like, he's a defensive communicator. Like, I think he can have a, a significant impact for this team. So, you know, I hope that he gets a, a big opportunity now that he's healthy. I'm excited to watch him play. Hopefully he can just stay healthy because, you know, we were really excited for him going into the season. I think that that's you know, a guy that's maybe flown under the radar just a little bit, not like he's going to go out there and, and get you 20 and eight or anything like that. But, you know, we, we knew we noticed it in summer league, like defensively, he really has the ability to make an impact. He moves well laterally. He can defend at the rim. He is very big on communicating defensively, which is something that this team so desperately needs. Uh, and he just plays with effort as well. So you mix all that in with his ability to space the floor. You know, I really hope he can stay healthy because that's a guy that, you know, let's face it, guys like Sadiq Bey have, have not played well this year. Like, there's no one in his way at, 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 on the wing or at the forward spot outside of Bogdanovich and, and Stewart that are really in front of him for sure for minutes long term. So uh, this is a guy that should get all the opportunity opportunity in the world uh, if he really is able to stay healthy. So I think I, that's a guy that you talk about all the injuries that Detroit has had. I'm really, really excited to see him back if he can stay healthy. Yeah, definitely. And you know what, Aaron? I know we're going to wrap this up. I have to, I hate, hate to backtrack, but I have to do it for one split second because I need to I need to put one thing out there logically for people uh, just about the the Killian Hayes, Jaden Ivey, Scoop Henderson thing. If Troy Weaver selected Jaden Ivey with the thought in his head, knowing that this year's upcoming draft is going to be so guard heavy with a guy like Scoot Henderson, almost certainly even at that point going number two overall, if he selected Jaden Ivey with the intention of tr potentially trading him in his second year, if Killian Hayes got better, then he's an idiot because he should have selected Keegan Murray, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you were going to select Jaden Ivey and then trade him only because Killian Hayes got better and you have Scoot Henderson coming in, then there should have been no question. Either Jalen Duran or Keegan Murray should have been the number five overall selection because no, because taking a guy with the intention of trading him in his second year, if a couple things go differently, when you could use a power forward, 
because that's what you would trade him for would be a big man or a power forward, then you're a fool. And Troy Weaver is an absolute moron. So that's the last thing I wanted to say on that one. It, just think about it logically like that. There's only two options. Either Troy Weaver is an idiot who doesn't think things through, or you're keeping Jaden Ivey. So there we go. Just just going to clip that Troy Weaver's a moron bit and have that <laughs> loaded for, for oh, great. moving forward. Please. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I think this was a, a good show we talked about a lot. Is there anything else that, that you wanted to get off your chest? Has it been a, a very passionate performance from you today? Mm. So Cathartic, cathartic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good, Aaron. I, I just had to get that last little thing because I think that that is kind of crucial to like how you have to look at that situation. You know what I mean? If Troy Weaver did select Jaden Ivey with the knowledge that he might have to trade him less than even a full year later, uh, he's really bad at his job. Like, there's no other way to look at it. He's he's not very good at his job. So, and there's so much that has to 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 fall a, a certain way for the Pistons to be in a position where maybe they do have to make a decision on if they want to keep Ivey. Uh, Cade Cunningham, Scoot Henderson, Killian Hayes, Alec Burks. Like, there's a lot that has to go a certain way. Like, it, it, Scoot Henderson's going to be the number two pick in the draft unless something absolutely wild happens one way or the other uh, in terms of him moving up or down. And outside of Scoot, a lot of the draft are, you know, guards. Outside of Victor, you know, it's Dariq Whitehead, the Thompson twins. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not really point guards. So, the Pistons won't have to really make any major decision uh, like that, you know, unless they do end up with the number two pick, which there's so much that has to go a certain way for that to happen. It all matters, you know, where they finish in terms of the record and the lottery balls. Like we don't need to be having these major, major discussions when we don't know where the lottery balls are going to fall. Like we're talking about things that are six months away uh, from taking place. So (laughs) <laughs> that's that's kind of where I'm going to wrap it there. I thought it was kind of an odd discussion to begin with, but enough people are talking about it. It's gotten enough attention that, you know, when I go through and build out the show, I look at what's going on in terms of the discussion on Pistons Twitter, different articles. That was something that was brought up. So wanted to bring it up here so we could could each give our take. But that's going to do it for this week's edition of the Palace of Pistons podcast brought to you by Believe. Make sure to use Bet Online. Promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Miss you this week, Mike. We're hoping to have him back next week for the show. Pistons got a handful of games coming up uh, in between now and, and when next week's show will probably drop, you know, if we continue these Thursday recordings, Friday dropping. Uh, they'll play a handful of games before then, so we'll have some more stuff to talk about. We'll see if the Pistons can get healthy, get guys like Isaiah Stewart, Jalen Duran back in the fold. But until then, wishing you all a great week, and we'll see you next time here on the Palace of Pistons podcast.